I chose asteroids and solar objects in our own solar system as the topic because I thought it would be much more accessible for uh, remote interactions, and I hope that worked. Uh, I think the students, uh, I hope they had a, a good time, and certainly they've done very impressive work uh, learning about asteroids. So there are four major categories of uh, near-Earth asteroids, and each uh, student uh, followed up an asteroid that was actually discovered with a telescope at Palomar that we work on, called the Spiki Transient Facility, uh, from each of these categories of asteroids. Um, and so I learned a lot from them because they actually all did in-depth research on each of these categories of asteroids. And that's what they're each going to be presenting today. So I did my research on Amor asteroids, which is another category of asteroids. And these asteroids, uh, they're categorized by having periapsids, which is just the plural of periapsis, that's the closest to get to the sun, um, between 1.017 and 1.3 AU. AU is astronomical units, which is the distance between the Earth and the sun the vast amount of resources um, I could access just for free. So a minor planet center is actually where all this data is coming from, where I pulled it from. And I, I was able to access a lot of papers for free or uh, through Caltech. This year, we got to do some coding. So I got to participate and learn with these very brilliant individuals on um, how to do such a thing, because it was also very new for me. I'm an environmental teacher. I don't do too much coding in my class, but I will this year because I have learned. I feel like that's really important, especially for research projects where you're supposed to be collaborating and everyone's like supposed to be together if someone's falling behind. It's really important to have a team that will help you and make sure that you're still on board with everything that's going on because even if though I was behind, I still knew what everyone was doing and what track they were on. I think that it showed that they were able to reach their goal, but that they also learned a lot about themselves and their work ethic and their abilities. At least I hope that's what I saw along this journey with you guys. And that no matter how difficult it got, that you guys had it and you were able to get it done. My name's Rochelle Kaninji. I've had the pleasure of working with Spiros and Chris for the past six weeks. We're on a project for Open the Door to Quantum Realm. So what does that mean? It means to share with the public the strange world of quantum mechanics. I've enjoyed working with them tremendously, but they have entirely put this together on their own um, with help from our wonderful teacher, Will Mason, who's been a great partner. And I just think it's been um, a super successful experience. Mine is a bit of a tale of uh, failure and then kind of pre entering the, the realm of success um, because I did not get any electricity produced or any results until the second to last week. So my data doesn't really look like it's uh, completed that parabola that you can often see in other groups. So I don't know yet whether or not it's going to level out or just completely die out. But nevertheless, it provides valuable insight. It kind of expanded like my horizons of like, what I want to do in the future. And so I, I think what I took away greatly from this is just like, you're not like when I think of chemistry or biology or physics, like I, I, I kind of like limit like myself when I think about it, but it kind of expanded. It, it all coincides, everything. This kind of brought aspects of, of all the fields and I thought that was really cool. It, it was really awesome.